All right, and <clears throat> we're getting the shop opened up. Well, we've been we've had it open for a little while. It rained today, early last night. Today, it's the winds really, the winds really kicking up. It's cold. Well, to me, it's cold. It's not really cold. I mean, I don't know where you live in the country, but I had to go get a shirt. I'm cold. I'm cold. I guess I'm getting old. Blood's getting thin. But uh, right here we have the... Uh, uh, we've gone over this before. It's the Riley Hopkins 250 from, uh, you know, Ryan at Ryanet.com or... Oh, I love this print press. I hate that I have to put it outside. Uh, we're running some shirts tonight. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you. We talked about... We talked about... Uh, water-based ink. And if you're trying to print water-based ink out under your back porch or your... You know, I got my little shelter here, and uh, water-based ink, when you're out in the weather, it dries out. You're always trying to keep it moist. It won't cover good. It gets sticky. It's tough in the cold weather. I don't know. You know, the, a couple weeks ago, I was forced to buy some Plastisol ink because I ran out of water-based ink, and I swore I would never print with Plastisol ink because of the solvents. That's what I understood, and my health is worth more than that. But I've watched enough videos now. You know, I go to the YouTube University, so I've got a lot of good, a lot of good solid uh, uh, people that are helping me. The one thing I don't like about the Riley Hopkins press, this is a four-station press. I have a tendency to... Uh, can you see that? No, you can see this one. Yeah. I have a tendency to load the shirts an inch to the left so that all my prints will come out sideways. It's just, I don't know. Whenever I load the shirts, I load them, you know, I load them to the left. And, you know, and, and the, my customers, you know, they kind of give me some feedback. You know, they laugh and they, they get shirts that are, you know, the print sideways. I have to throw them away. I throw the shirts away and I have to reprint them. It's tough. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just me. And when I put the shirt on the the, pa the palette, I thread it on. So anyway, I put these sticks on here, and I've centered them, and it gives me a uh, a reference to thread on. You know, if I'm going to thread on a an inch from the, so if I'm threading the shirt on. Okay, here I am. I'm threading the shirt on. I can feel the seam of this shirt. The seam is on both sides. I can feel the seam. So I grab the seam, but I look at this stick. And I, and I know this is kind of janky. It's a, it's a piece of wood with a string tied on here. It's not very good. And I can, I can uh, line the seam up about an inch from each side of this stick. And I put it on the pallet straight. I mean... You got to do what you got to do to to get your good quality print, and this is what I have to do. But I'm going to say the uh, the uh, Plastisol ink, Plastisol ink. So I load this ink in here a little while ago. Plastisol ink with this uh, the Easy Grip, the Easy Grip. Uh, squeegee and i got the the highest durometer i think it's the 80 durometer i like a stiff i like a stiff sweep and i'm printing white ink and i've got the uh fn ink the uh financially necessary white this is a high quality ink. this is what ryonet sells it's i don't you know i'm not big on the way it is pronounced fn ink you know it kind of gives you the employment implies that it would be like you know a you know maybe a inappropriate name but it's for financially necessary white but this ink is a is a low cure ink 
it cures at 260 degrees. I always uh, had trouble curing the, uh, the water base ink. But anyway, I don't have a conveyor dryer. I got a Ryonet, uh, you know, uh, flash over here. It stays outside. It's a infrared flash. It's a good flash. I mean, it's, oh, it's pretty. But anyway, this setup right here, I probably need to uh, get something a little more. I would like to get a like aluminum yardstick. Ryan that really needs it. They when they're building their I bet you Ryan at Ryan that'll watch this video. Uh, right now I got like three followers. But when Ryan watches this video, this is a great addition to his Riley Hopkins. What did I say it was a 250? He should put that on every press that he has so that people like me can line the shirt up straight. But what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to buy some aluminum uh, yard sticks and I'm going to drill and tap and bolt that in right there. I'll probably use some uh, some self-tapping screws or something like that. But we've got a, I've got 52 shirts in this order. And you know that I, I work basically 10 hours a day. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to get this get this screen print that's not a screen print i'm trying to get a business started from my backyard i don't know how many of you are out there that does a little side hustle job but these uh these are tough jobs they're tough jobs i mean when it's tough when you're doing a little side hustle but i'll be honest with you this uh plastisol ink in combination with the easy grip and the easy grip is not a pull it's not a pull squeegee I don't, I don't like pulling I always I've always since I've been printing water-based ink for about five years I've been printing five or six years maybe longer than that maybe eight years I've been printing water-based ink I've been struggling with water-based ink and I've always used this wood squeegee combo this is trash i'm gonna throw that away what you want to use and i've always been a pull i've always had that the water-based ink and i've always been a pull squeegee because i can put down a lot of water-based ink whenever i pull but it is rough on the shoulders and the arms and the elbows oh if i had to do 52 shirts after working 10 hours at work, I come home and I'm looking at 52 black t-shirts. I'm talking white on black, the hardest print. That is by far the hardest print color combination that you got to do. And uh, I would just not be happy to have to do 52 shirts with water-based white ink. And I use that uh, cryo, anyway, it's like cryo white that from from Ryanet, uh, screenprint.com. But anyway, that would be a rough day. And to get it to cover good, you'd be lucky. Plus, to get the water to evaporate off, you've got to leave it under the, the uh, flash for like 45 seconds on every turn. And you'd have to do a pull stroke and you'd be working your lats to the point where you would be like the time to break down. And you'd have so much ink on the screen to keep it from drying out. And I, I went inside to take a break and I come back out. And if I were printing water-based ink, I promise you, this screen would have dried out. I would have been done. It, because it's windy it's but i mean look at that and now watch how fast i'm gonna put that under there and by the time i would have to let it sit if i were doing the same job and i've done the same job with water-based ink before on the same t-shirt blank now when i'm doing this push this push uh print 
on the first pass, I'm doing a push and I'm putting the weight down on it. And you can see, can you see that over there? Oh, not too good. Look at that first print. That first print looks awesome. And I'm gonna do two prints. I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a put, I'm gonna do a print flash print. And I'm putting the weight on this now. I'm gonna tell you, it's a push, it's a push print. And I am really putting the weight on it, but I'm only gonna flash it for as long as it takes me to print the next one. And I'm gonna go ahead and roll these four shirts. 52 shirts to print. With water-based ink, you would have to leave it under that flash for 45 seconds every turn to evaporate off the water. But obviously with plastisol, you're not evaporating off the water. You're evaporating off a of solvent. Whatever solvent it is, I don't know. But that second pass, I'm not even going to slow down. I don't have a conveyor dryer. I'm a small businessman trying to get a upstart home-based business from my garage, uh, shelter in the backyard. I'm not sure if there's some other small base businesses out there that are trying to make it work. But I'm telling you, don't deal with water-based paints. And you want this squeegee. I think I paid $45 or $50 for this squeegee. And it is worth every penny. I mean, look at that. I've done two passes on four shirts. They're already in there. Two passes. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, okay, we got some company on the farm. You know, I tell you sometimes we get some company on the farm. And I also tell you that I'm will not going to stop these videos because whenever I have a video that has more than one video that I've got to link together and I've got to, I've got to use another software. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, how's it going? Good. Just print some shirts tonight. Good day at work. It's okay. I can't complain. Good. 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 We're knocking on out tonight. Get some more of these baptism shirts ready. How many do you have to do today? 52. When's the, uh, baptism Sunday this week? Yeah, you know how it is. You always get the orders late. It's uh, time to get them done. You don't have a lot of... Uh, you got to make it, make it happen, right? At least, you know, at least they give you a day in advance. Yeah, they give me a couple days, yeah. <laughs> We're going to get it done. We still got a couple days. We're fine. Yeah, that's right. I might have to tap into that resource. It's a good resource. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Well, good to see you. Good to see you. I'll see you when you get inside. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's good to have family come through. I mean, I, that's why I work in the backyard. I work in the backyard so that when my family comes through, I can say hi and I can spend some time with them okay now we've already gone and printed two passes on all of these on a push a push stroke and i put the weight into it because i wanted to get a, and i pushed it about three times but so much easier than the pull stroke with the water-based paint and with the water-based ink you are always having to mist it to keep it from drying out now what i'm going to do is as fast as these I, I can. I'll change these shirts out for the next group. I mean, I'm doing 52. I only have two hours a day to work on this. I mean, I don't know about you, but if you work 10 hours a day at your main job, but you really have an entrepreneurial spirit and you really want to, uh, you really want to, 
You know, you want to you want to set your own path. You want to do your own thing, right? You want to be your own boss. Okay. And uh I mean, I want to be my own boss one day. I want to retire. I want to retire right here in the backyard. And it I don't have to do t-shirts. Talked about that. I wouldn't mind having a 3D print farm. I've got a really nice 3D printer. And uh, I'm going to get my son to help me bring it out to the shop. I hadn't done that yet. i got to get that done. I don't care what I'm doing, but I want to move to a home base entrepreneurial business where I can just wake up every day, come out to my shop, I mean, this shelter in the backyard, it's just a tin roof, it's just a tin roof pole barn shelter. It does have a concrete floor. It's nice. It used to have a dirt floor, but we were able to add a little concrete. I built this shelter myself. I built this shelter two by sixes, six by six post. I built that swing set for my grandbabies. You know. Got a little trampoline over there. They come over sometimes. I want to be here. I, I could do a lawn care business or I could do like a uh, pressure washer business. I had an offer one time to uh, start up an asbestos, uh, asbestos removal business. I've, I'm a chemist by degree, so they wanted to... Uh, they wanted me to be the consultant for the business, but I just, you know, it would, we would have had to travel, you know, an asbestos uh, removal business. You'd have to go out to the site uh, and then you would be working all over in the southeast United States. So I'm just not interested in a job that I've got to travel because I've already been offered a lot of jobs where I can travel. So anyway, I'm going to stay with this. This seems to work good. I've just got to get my flow down to where I can uh, learn enough to. So you watch me in just a few minutes and I was talking most of the time, but we've already printed four shirts. We don't have that many. We're going to do these four and then we only have four shirts left. <clears throat> and that's a watch how fast these push prints go now I'm putting the weight to it it's a lot of weight but whenever I've I, you know it just doesn't print that easy with water based ink and then I'll flash it only long enough to print the next shirt it's just hard to believe how good Plastisol ink prints. Plus, I hardly have any ink on my screen. If I were working with this, look at that. Dang, that is a great first pass. So it's, and like I say, I watch a lot of people online. They're pool printers. You know, when I say a pool printer, they pull their squeegee. And this is a push, and I give it just three good heavy pushes, and that clears the screen. I flood the screen, I move on. That's four already, and we're doing the second coat. The one thing I really, well, it's all about how much money you have to invest. This uh, Raleigh Hopkins 250s, it's a very expensive press. But I like it. It has the X, Y, Z registration. I can get my screens lined up. One thing I don't have is a good uh, printer and any kind of separation software. And the, uh, what is it? The... Uh, Oh, what do they call it? Where you have the different in dot concentrations. 
But anyway, I don't have a good uh, half tones. That's what they call it. The half tones is where you have a different concentrations of dots to make an image. I don't have a good half. I don't have the half tone software or printer, and I need really. See, that's how fast you can print four. That's how fast you can print four backs. Man. And we're going to just now, now the uh, final cure, I don't have a, this, if, if you were in a, uh, a normal print shop, you would have a conveyor dryer and you'd throw this shirt in a conveyor dryer and it'd take a minute to go through the conveyor dryer and you'd be done. But I, I don't have a conveyor dryer, so I'm going to have to, let it sit under the flash. I don't, 45 seconds seems to work, you know. And then we only have four shirts left. I mean, 52 shirts in just a couple hours. Now, I mean, that is amazing. I cannot believe how easy it was. Now, I had a little bit of a learning curve on the... Uh, the easy grip. All right, that's 45 seconds. All right, I'll talk to you in a minute. But I mean, look at that. I'm going to take that shirt off. But anyway, this, I had a little uh, learning curve on these, the easy grip. Easy grip. These are from Ryanette. Anyway, I, I like this. I didn't like it at first, but it's super lightweight. Now that I've got the push technique down, and it's easy to clean because I'll just take this, this uh, piece just comes right out. You know, with the wood pieces, it's you don't take them in and out, but this is easy to clean. You can just take that out and, uh, and wipe it down with an old t-shirt, but that, uh, F and ink and the easy grip push. I mean, you can't get, I have never been able to print this. Now this is rough. This is a rough print. I can feel that's rough. I'm gonna, I, I gotta do the fronts. I hadn't done the front yet, but anyway, I do the fronts tomorrow night. But then all I gotta do, I'm gonna press these on my heat press and I'm gonna melt that uh, ink into the, it's this plastisol ink. It's not going to go into the fabric. But I normally melt the water base ink even more into the fabric. And it'll turn... It'll, it'll actually decrease in intensity because it melts into the fabric. When you, when you heat press it, you got to be careful with the temp and the intensity. But uh, this plastisol ink sits on top of the fabric. It's not going to push into the fabric so yeah a quick 52 backs I cannot believe it and I got another hour you know last night I was telling you that there's no comparison between water base and plastic salt I can see why the industry standard is plastic salt ink I cannot understand why you would ever want to print on water base ink they say well some applications will call for water base ink well I don't see it I've been printing for like I say eight years with all water base ink and I'm pretty sure that if I had plastisol ink for every job I had for the last eight years I would uh, have been better off with the uh Plastisol, you can't see it. Maybe uh, the water base lasts longer before it cracks, or maybe whatever. Most shirts people wear one or two times anyway, and they're going to throw it in the trash. Plastisol ink supposed to give you 50 washes. I think industry standards 50 washes. You can wash your shirt 50 times. That means you wore it every week for a year. You need to throw that T-shirt away anyway. Probably got a hole under the arm. Yeah, you probably got holes under your arms at 50 washes anyway.
But doesn't that look good? Man, like I say, we're a very small print shop and I've been learning to print just, you know, watching YouTube videos, struggling. I've never made any money in this business, but I'm moving in the right direction. I'm focused now. You know, a lot of times I would quit printing for a long time. Eight years seems like a long time to print, but not really. You practice developing your screens. You work on, we do sublimation, so we've been doing that for a couple years. But sublimation is a art form to itself. And what I really would like to, and I'm going to start doing, I always wanted to, but with a water-based ink, you can't do a direct transfer. Water-based ink doesn't work on direct transfer uh, prints, but Plastisol does. I'd like a direct transfer printer, I think. You know, I, I look at, uh, I have a Sawgrass 1000 sublimation printer. I like it. It's paid for itself. It's been the workhorse for the company. We're uh, coming along with it. 52 shirts in just, uh, I don't know, two hours. 52 backs. And like I say, if this were a, uh, a any other color, you wouldn't have to do this. You wouldn't have to do print, flash print. You could just do the print and you'd be done. And if you had a conveyor dryer, you would be fast. But since we don't have that, I still can't believe the, the difference. I'm a process flow specialist. And uh, the Plastisol ink process is it has to be it has to take you at least half the time and trouble as the water base and this squeegee is legit i'm going to order me a couple more we are going to start now that i'm on the plastisol and I don't use any solvents to, uh, huh. this is messed up. I say this is messed up because I always start on number one and I print to number four. But this is the second coat on that one. But that was number four. And when I say number four, it's just a workstation number four. So... I usually always start on number one. And I mean, man, I have never printed this fast. Fifty two bags in just a couple hours. So that means I don't have to work late into the night tonight. And what that means is tomorrow night, three, oh, two, one. <laughs> Did I print all of them too? Oh, four, yeah. All right, yeah, that's right. What that means is tomorrow night, I already have the fronts. Now the fronts are two colors. They may take a little longer, but I'll finish all these tomorrow night. Well, I've got two or three days left to get this order done. So if I finish all the fronts tomorrow night, then that'll still give me a couple days to uh, press all of them. So if I press 52 shirts, you know, I've told you a hundred times not quite enough. I got my timer on over there. hundred times. Ten shirts a day is all we need to stay in business. If we're doing 52 backs and 52 fronts, and I still got 
30, 45 minutes to work on some sublimation shirts or maybe some accounting or some bookkeeping or taxes or uh, search engine optimization. You know, there's a lot going on. We got, uh, we're doing good, but man, I'm just saying that looks incredible. Incredible. So I'm going to just tell you, it's long enough. When you're printing in your print shop, and you're thinking about whether you're going to use water base or plastisol, and you got to get the job done. You don't. I don't. I don't think anybody can talk me into to doing a uh, a water base print again. So I'm going to let that go with you tonight. We're we're done. I mean, we're going to run these 45 seconds on each one, and then in four minutes we're going to be done with this. 52 backs, Plastisol push, easy grip, squeegee. And the thing about it is I'm going to leave this set up. So if my customer over the next day or two uh, requests another additional shirt, sometimes they, they go, oh, last minute, can you just print me one more? With water-based paint, you got to clean all this up every single night. you got to clean all of these screens out. you got to wash everything out. And then when you start tomorrow night, you got to realign everything. Now, one thing I will tell you is this uh, palette. I use this palette. Uh, it's kind of a stick on. There's a lot of things to use. But if you don't have some kind of coating on your palettes, these things get really nasty. And they're hard to clean. But when you're using this palette tape, I guess it's tape or liner or whatever you want to call it, it's sticky on one side, and then you have to put the, uh, I like using the glue adhesive on the other side. But it's very easy. I think I already heated that one. Let's, we're going to cure it again. I get my soccer times off. But anyway, we're going to clean these pallets up. We'll uh, put down some more adhesive on them tomorrow. And we'll uh, print the fronts, and you'll see that. And then uh, the next night, we'll, we'll, I don't know, I might, I might recruit my, sometimes my wife will help me. Hey, you know, maybe I'll get her to heat press them while I do the fronts. So as soon as they come off the, the uh, screen print, she can uh, heat press them and fold them for me. That'd be real nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to talk her into that. And then I can get back into sublimation because we've been selling shirts this week. I think we sold 10 more shirts today. And uh, I know that's not a big number for big print shops, but we're just starting out. And uh, whenever we're, we're running these orders and we got some good uh, traffic, we have so much traffic, it's great. We're not only going to just... Uh, keep the doors open we're going to build this business we're going to build a i got some plans for a big shop i mean you can see where i'm working today i just need the grandbabies over here playing and you can see the trampoline i don't know if you got a trampoline in your backyard and a fisher price play set and a little swing set but yeah there you go that's how it is that's how it is life on the farm we're good. I'm going to let you go. We're going to see you tomorrow night. We're going to print these fronts tomorrow night, okay? See you tomorrow night.